Okay. All right, come in, my friend. They tend to join late, so. <laughs> <laughs> so do I leave these front seats for somebody else? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's whatever you want. I think it's just going to be us, unless the uh, the front desk comes. Some uh, Rebecca and Lisa may come in. But uh, how many people do you have this month? <sighs> oh, oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's about sixteen that passed, you know. For October, only five in November, but this one will be October's, and they're sixteen. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, it's a lot. I might recognize some of them. I think you will. <laughs> yeah, sadly, I think you will. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll get going. We got. So this isn't going to be a video recording, is it? No, this is live on Zoom through the same GramPad link that I sent everybody. Yeah. And then, and then I'm recording it through my phone at the same time because I couldn't record it through Zoom. I usually can, but you know, since Christy set this this memorial she set up, I set up the next ones, but she did this one and I have to call her and get her to push record real quick if she answers, <laughs> you know? So it's easier for me just to record it on my phone and then I can send that link to them. You don't have the picture for that, you just have the audio, right? Just, no, it'll be the picture. I've got both, okay. yeah, my phone has video and audio, so it's just okay. like the, yeah. In fact, it's set up right behind you, <laughs> on the, <laughs> setting on the thing there. So we're good, we're okay. So hopefully people come in. Welcome to the service for October, uh, October's passing. And uh, we'll begin with our, uh, our invocation prayer. Uh, please join me. Father, we seek you because you have sought us. We find you because you want to be found, because you are always near. In this hour of sober thoughts and unique feelings, we need the comfort offered by Isaiah and by all the other human authors of your divine word. We need to be reminded that whenever we return to you, you will have mercy on us. Father of all of us, prodigal sons and daughters, help us to rejoice in the, in the mercy that you have shown to these participants and to help grow in thankfulness for your mercies to us. In the name of him to whom we owe it all. Amen. And I'd like to share the eulogy for today, beginning with a passage about the temporal and the eternal life from 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4 says, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and we are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So that it is mortal that we may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. To the many friends and family of those who have passed, grace to you and peace from God our creator and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Together we gather to celebrate the valiant life of some of the most finest, beautiful human beings to those who have had the pleasure of knowing them. Honest hard work. This is something that God seeks from all of us. God's words tell us that working hard, but with faith in mind, can lead to great things that, that he has planned for us. Paul tells us in Colossians, whatever you do, work at it with your whole heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. And the wisdom of, the, of Solomon prevails in Proverbs, which says, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. A verse that still is very much applicable today. Indeed, many of our participants worked hard all of their lives. Indeed, our participants enjoyed a blessed life, if not a long life. And speaking of long life, the Bible tells us that the days of Methuselah, Enoch's son, were 969 years, and then he died. Genesis 5.21. That's all we know. We're not told about what he did with all those years. In biblical times, long life was considered a real blessing, largely because it was so rare. If Jesus died at 33, he outlived his colleagues and predecessors more than 33, more than six years beyond the average lifespan of the Roman Empire in his day. Wow. We live much longer nowadays, but the principal question remains, what are we doing with all these years mm. that we're given? So today we remember with affection and thanksgiving those participants who have since gone to be with their maker. A few thoughts on aging may therefore be in order since it's something that happens to all of us at the boring, predictable rate of 24 hours a day. 
What are some of the hallmarks of aging? Well, for one thing, we can afford to be realistic about the fact of aging. Jesus never dealt with people in stereotypes, such as young or old. Jesus dealt with people as persons, as unique individuals. Faith in him can help us accept the balding of our heads and the hardening of our arteries, because he is able to give us power at any age to make the best of our God-given resources for that age. Life does not begin at 40, but it doesn't begin at 65 either. Life begins when we enter into partnership with the living Lord. With him, we can face the facts of aging and deal with them one by one with courage and with hope. Another hallmark of aging is skill in giving. I've learned from many of our friends and family of those who have passed that they were great listeners and someone you could confide in. That's so important because oftentimes we hear, but we don't listen. To have someone in your life that you can share your deepest feelings with and know that they are actively listening to you is a true blessing. If we have learned to give not only the lesser of these gifts of money and things, but the greater, the more involving gifts of our time, our understanding, and our love. I close the eulogy with a poem by Christina Rossetti. It's called, Miss Me, But Let Me Go. When I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul that's gone? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all a part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick of heart, go to the friends and bury your sorrows in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. I want to share that with you. And, and next, I'd like to share a song that I'd written uh, about leaving this earth and going to be in heaven. And uh, I'll see what you guys think. This is called The Traveler. I wrote this and published it and produced it. And uh, it was on the radio for a while in Reno, Nevada. <laughs> wow. I got second place in a songwriting contest. So, And it's about heaven. <laughs> it's about leaving the earth and uh, going to heaven. So I thought it was appropriate uh, for the service, but uh, I'll play it live. So let's see what you think. Okay. <laughs>
Thanks. <laughs> that was really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. That's my honor to those who have passed. Yes. Yeah. We travel from this earth to something greater. <laughs> so you have to right. believe. That's right. The hope. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And now we have our uh, one by one members who have passed. Mm -hmm. So we start with Lou Ann Young. And she was born April 20th, 1940, on the one, and she passed October 1st. 2021, and I read that Luann called, um, uh, or sorry, loved Werther's candies, and she would pass them out to people randomly. <laughs> it said of her, um, and I talked to her social worker a bit, and uh, and asked about her in that regard. Samuel Ingram, yeah, is our next one. June 26, 1935 to October 8th, 2021, and of course, so yeah, of course, Linda's here uh, yeah. still with us, and I I have worked with her quite a bit for That's grief. Amazing. Yeah, but uh, he loved his wife, Linda, and their dog. He fought the good fight for his life up till the very end. And he was a kind man. Yes, he was. That's right. Samuel. Next we have Ludwina yeah, Morocco. She, she was another sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, she lived, uh, or she was born April 8th, 1934, and passed 10-9 uh, of 2021. Ludwina was Polish. Mm -hmm. She was a Polish speaker, but she knew a few words in English. She'd give hugs and say that she loved everyone. <laughs> she was a very faithful and sweet lady. Yeah, yeah. She was good. And Wanda Reeves, mm -hmm. you may recognize. December 21st, 1932, and passed October 12th, 2021. Wanda was always beautifully dressed, it's said of her. And her hair was, and her nails were kept neat. She also liked to play music. <laughs> And I got a lot of this information from their social workers or counselors or family members, but they tell me because sadly I didn't make it around to meet them before right. they oh, passed. Yeah. Janice McDerry's, yeah, September 15th, 1949, passed October 15th, 2021. Um, she was able to go on shopping trips with her granddaughter um, to Walmart and they got some things that fixed up her room at her adult uh, assisted living mm -hmm. facility. She valued her family and recently had a surprise visit from her brother. From Texas before she passed. Good. That was good. Our next one, I don't know if you recognize, and you know, yeah. you'd like to go by Lynn. Curtis yeah. Lynn Watson, yeah. February 24th, uh, 1955 to October 17th, 2021. And Lynn liked to be called Lynn, and mm -hmm. his family referred to him as Lynn as well. Mm -hmm. He was close to his sister, Lynn. And he would come into the bundle of papers and go right to the one of the therapy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he'd go on the computer. He loved to be on the computer. Oh. <laughs> he was a nice man. Oh, that's special. This one I actually did receive a, a nice collage of oh, pictures from yeah. uh, from his son, uh -huh. um, Donald Pop, yep. they called him, uh, in 14, yeah, March 14th, 1939, and he passed October 18th, yeah. 2021. So there's some, some pictures yeah, of him. Yeah, his family, yeah. Um, yeah, Pop lived long. Uh, he had a hard life, but he came to know Jesus uh, as his personal savior in 2012. So Pop was ready to depart this world and all the sufferings that he experienced. He's survived by his daughter Shelly and two granddaughters that he adopted and his son Steve. His wife Marlene passed away early in 2020. Eva Lou Brennan, I don't know if you recognize her. July 7th, 1932 to October 20th, uh, 2021. Eva valued her family and the assistance we provided. Eva has a strong family support and strong and was a strong Christian. She was also a sweet lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Our next one is Faye. Yeah. Faye Walsher. Yeah. She was a love. Yeah. October 29th, 20, uh, 1928 to October 20th, mm -hmm. 2021. And Faye was loved by her friends and family. And she'll be missed, but will not be forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Faye was nice. I don't know if you recognize him. Andrew. Drew. He went by Drew. Yeah. September 22nd, 1957, he passed October 23rd, 2021. And sadly, uh, his uh, wife had passed as well around the same time. And his niece was sick with COVID. And I don't know if she's still around. So it was hard to get any information on her. Right. But he'll be loved, or he'll be missed, and he's loved. Drew Eric. Gary L. Mitchell. I didn't have a photo, sadly, for him, uh, either in our system or nobody in the family sent me one. But he was strong willed. His, cow, his social worker said he was independent-minded, and he would describe himself as a cowboy, mm -hmm. and he had a great smile. <laughs> he, said, he said no photos. 
Is that right? No. <laughs> that would make sense. No pictures? No picture. I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. So that was Gary Mitchell. Yes. Yeah, Scott, Scotty. He went by Scotty. Yes, he did. <laughs> April 28th, 1956 to October 29th, 2021. Maybe he's a category. Maybe so. Said he was loved and admired well, by his friends. We have several Scotties. That's not Scotty. Scotty. That's not the dog man, Scotty. It's I double checked because no. I thought it was. It's not the Scotty. No, that's still, he's still around. So we, have, still so we had three Scotties at least. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah there was in, the, in Cognitive Life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Doreen, for dropping in. Sure. Um, Scotty was admired by his friends hey. and family. His wife said thank you for Pace and for all that we did to help him. His wife was really appreciative of uh, our help. And uh, Hazel Whaley is next. Uh, July 4th, 1946 to October 29th, 2021. Uh, she shared with her, her social worker that she was raised on a farm and taught to appreciate life. And she wanted to live as long as possible. When I asked her, uh, when her social worker asked her what she valued the most, she said it was her appreciation of life. She was supported by her large fam family and was proud of her family and close friends. Her daughters, her daughter-in-law, uh, Dee, and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. She's about, um, I'm about two, two months and four days older than her. Ooh. 1946, May wow. 1st, 1946. Oh boy, that brings it to perspective. <laughs> well, you're doing good. <laughs> Waltrude, uh, Waltrude, she went by Kate Sandosek. January 4th, 1931 to October 29th, 2021. And uh, she was a loving mother and from Germany. German was her first language and she married a military man. Not sure of the branch, uh, according to her social worker. Um, but uh, let's see, she loved, she lived in the mountains with her husband for years and enjoyed the solitude. She was preceded in death by her daughter, uh, who lived here as well. So that's hard. That's tough. That's tough. Hey, Evelyn, <laughs> I was waiting for you to come in. <laughs> Good to see you. I'll repeat some of these after I finish them so you can, we can go back through. Yeah. Because since you missed some of these, um, I'm towards the end now, though. But I'll, I'll start it over. Um, Carl Menke uh, is with us here. Uh, or not with us, is it on the screen. December 24th, 1942. He passed October 30th, 2021. And Carl was loving. Uh, was a loving husband and father. He'll be missed, but not forgotten. And lastly, we have Charles. He went by Reeves. And he was actually on the PAC committee. And he had passed March 3rd. Or he was uh, born March 3rd, 1938 passed October 31st, 2021. Uh, Josephine, his wife, uh, would love to have heard how Charles shared his involvement with others at Pace. He was actually, like I mentioned, on the PAC team. Uh, he transitioned into a senior nursing facility and he was on various committees. He really loved his time at Pace. Uh, he enrolled in Pace at 2016 and uh, Josephine, oh, his wife Josephine spent years building a relationship with a lot of the participants and staff. Um, I know they really appreciate, we're really appreciative of Pace. And that brings us to our end. So let me finish out in prayer. And then for those that showed up a little later, I'll start the, the, the session over. At least you can see the pictures. But uh, I wanted to close in prayer. Um, so let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the lives of our beloved family and friends. We ask that you take care of them now, that they have safely arrived in your kingdom. We ask that you be with their families and their friends as they mourn such a loss of such great people. We thank you for all you do for us each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs> thank you so much for attending. Thanks, Glenn, for coming today. It meant a lot you, you could be here the whole service. <laughs> and that's the least amount I've ever heard you speak, by the way. <laughs> Which is not a, a bad thing. <laughs> but, but it was great. <laughs> Probably the most I've spoken, the least you, you've ever. You, you've heard my how are you. That's and, yeah. And it, and it ends with, and so I'm not going to tell you. You're right. <laughs> but that's I did right. tell you. you did, and, and yeah, yeah. That's, I heard that. that. I forget how it ends, but it's something about being quiet. That sounds not right. Say anything. <laughs> Again, never, always. Always. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Thanks, Glenn. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Hey, Evelyn, let me go through the. I'll start over so we can you can see the ones that you didn't catch. We started right at noon. So here's the first one. Uh, yeah, Luann. So Luann 
uh, was born April 20th, 1941, and she passed October 1st, 2021. And uh, Luann loved Werther's candies, and she would pass them out randomly to people at Pace. So that's Luann. Next, we have, of course, Linda's husband, Samuel. Sam Ingraham, June 26, 1935. He passed October 8, 2021. He's loved by Linda, and he loved their dog, it says. He fought the good fight of his life all the way up till the very end. Such a kind man. And um, as you know, I spend a lot of time with Linda, um, or as much as, as I can, to help bring her comfort and grief and bereavement, yeah, for the passing of Sam. That was Sam. He was well loved here at Pace. Um, next, we have Ludwina Moroqua, April 8th, 1934, and she passed October 9th, 2021. Ludwina was Polish, but she knew a few English words and would give hugs to everyone and say that she loved everyone. <laughs> She's a very faithful and sweet lady. Uh, Wanda Reeves had uh, been born December 21st, 1932, and she passed October 12th, 2021. Wanda was always beautifully dressed with her hair and her nails nicely done. She also liked to play bingo. Yeah, she liked to play bingo. Janice McDerry's was born September 15th, 1949. She passed October 15th, 2021. Uh, and the participant uh, was able to go on a few shopping trips with her granddaughter and her daughter uh, to Walmart. And they became, uh, they got really close and they started fixing up her uh, living facility before she passed. She values her family and she had a surprise visit from her brother from Texas before she had passed. That was Janice. You might, I don't know if you recognize this person, Curtis, he went by Lynn, but his last name's Watson, Curtis Lynn Watson. February 24th, 1955, and he passed October 17th, 2021. Says he liked to be called Lynn. Uh, his family referred to him as Lynn as well. He was very close to his sister, Maria. And then next we have Donald Self. He was called Pop by uh, his kids. Uh, he was born 14, uh, March 14th, 1939, and he passed October 18th, 2021. And like you sent me pictures of Sam, uh, of Sam, <laughs> of uh, Alvin, this also uh, is a collage of his family. So he sent me pictures. So you sent me Al's picture, and uh, his son sent me these. So I thought that was nice. Um, but yeah, it's a collage of all of his family members there. So his name was Pop, and it said Pop lived a long, hard life, but he came to know Jesus as his savior in 2012. So he was ready to depart this world and all the sufferings he experienced. He's survived by his daughter, Shelly, and his two grandkids, and his adopted son, Steve, who sent me this. Um, his wife, Marlene, passed away, sadly, in 2020. That was uh, Pop. Eva Lou Brennan. July 17th, 1932, and she passed October 20th, 2021. And uh, Eva valued her family and, and the assistance that we provided. Eva has a strong family support and a strong Christian faith. She was also a very sweet lady. And that brings us to Faye, Faye Walter. Uh, Faye was born October 29th, 1928, and passed October 20th, 2021. And Faye, uh, I couldn't get a lot of information on her, but she'll be missed, uh, and she was loved here at Pace. Hello. Our next uh, participant who passed is Andrew Drew Harris. Yeah, Andrew Drew Harris. Uh, similarly, he lost his wife and I think his niece uh, in the, around the same time, which was very sad. So he's, he will definitely be missed, uh, and he's remembered and loved by his surviving family. I have a story about him. Oh, please, sure. Yeah. But I don't have a whole lot of time. So oh, good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, am I inter not interrupting? No, I'm doing a repeat, so you're good. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. Can I ask this? Do you have Ava Whaley up there? I do. Can you, is it can you click to that? Oh, yeah. I will come back and tell you the story about Andrew. Thanks. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. My goodness. Yep, I got to go. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll come back and talk to you about it. Yeah, okay, yeah, please do. Please do. Gary L. Mitchell, uh, June 23rd, 1953, passed on October 28th, 2021. And I couldn't get a picture. Uh, he didn't have one on file, unfortunately. He was strong-willed independent, and he would describe himself as a cowboy. 
He had a great smile. And that brings us to Scotty, which is, I think, where we left off when you jumped in. Scott, or Scotty Evans, born April 28, 1956, and he passed October 29, 2021. Scotty was loved and admired by his friends and family. His wife said, thank you, and thank Pace for all that they did to help him. She was truly appreciative of our services. And we mentioned Hazel and uh, Kate, you saw, and Carl and Reeves. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Evelyn. It's good to see you. I recorded this, so I'll send you guys the recording. Because uh, I know I didn't see Linda up here. So I'll, I'll, send, uh, I'll send her the recording. Oh, you're on mute, Evelyn. Try to uh, see if you have a little... There you go. There you go. Oh, now I got you. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't able to get hold of her. Oh. And so to okay. remind her, I would think she would have known about it. I Yeah, I sent a bunch of reminders, and I told her last time she was in here. Um, yeah. She